In this video, I'll show you how to sew wire to buckram. In most cases, you will sew it by hand, but I'll also include an explanation of how to sew wire to buckram on a sewing machine. You will need needle nose pliers that have wire cutters on them, or dedicated wire cutters. You can get either of these at a hardware store. Locking pliers help to crimp one of the components that join wire ends together. Milliner's needles are sized the same as sewing needles, with the smaller numbers being the larger needle, except that milliner's are much longer. You can usually get a variety of sizes in one package. I mainly use size 9 needles, but it is going to depend on the thickness of your thread. A thimble is necessary for pushing the needle through several layers of fabric and buckram. I prefer leather thimbles, but find a style that is comfortable for you. Heavy duty thread is typically used to sew wire to buckram by hand. This is Coates and Clark, but any brand will do. If you don't have heavy duty thread, you can use double strand of regular sewing thread. Beeswax is helpful to make the thread slide through the buckram and fabric more easily. Small binder clips can be helpful to hold the wire against the buckram shape while stitching. Wire joiners are small tubes that allow the cut ends of the wire to join together seamlessly. There are a few different widths, so you'll need to make sure that your joiner is big enough for your wire when you buy them. Crinoline tape is used to wrap the wire once it's sewn to the buckram. It helps to buffer the hard edge of the wire against the fabric. It is bias cut to allow for smooth curves. I have a dedicated pair of heavy duty scissors for buckram. Any pair of scissors will do, but do not use fine fabric scissors for buckram as it tends to dull the blades over time. Buckram is a plain weave cotton fabric that has been sized with glue. It is available in various weights, but for hat bases, you'll need heavy weight buckram. When steamed, buckram will conform to hat blocks and shaping. When dry, buckram can be used as a filling base for wire frame hats. Millinery wire comes in the same gauges as any other wire, except it is wrapped with a rayon thread that helps to hold on to the edge of the buckram. The wrapping helps catch the needle when hand stitching. For most millinery applications, you will need number 19 wire. The bigger the gauge number, the thinner the wire will be, and therefore more flexible. Millinery wire comes in both black and white, and sometimes beige. There is a specialized plastic wire called Brimlock that is designed for lighter, more flexible applications. This wire can be washed. If your wire is going to be exposed, you can easily color the white wire with a permanent marker. Place the wire on a scrap of paper and paint it with the marker. The fiber easily absorbs the color. Be sure to color each side of the wire. For machine sewing wire to buckram, you will need a machine with a zigzag stitch and a cording foot. The cording foot has a channel in the middle that allows the wire to slide through it. Look for a foot with a wide channel so the wire doesn't catch on the foot as it sews. Cut the thread to a working length of 18 to 20 inches and thread the needle. Pull out about 3 inches of thread. Brace a section of the 3 inch end between your fingers on a flat surface. Scrape the needle across the thread until the point just passes the thread, then stab the thread, splitting it. Pull the thread down the shaft of the needle and down the working end of the thread. Pull the working end of the thread to shore up the thread loop against the needle eye. This forms a sort of hitch knot. This knot helps keep the thread on the needle while you sew. Run the thread through the wax to coat it. I do this a couple of times. Place the waxed thread in the fold of a scrap of typing paper with the needle just sticking out. With a hot dry iron, press down on the paper and pull the needle running the wax thread under the hot iron. The heat melts the wax into the thread and leaves the residue on the paper. 
Repeat this once more to remove the remaining residual wax from the surface of the thread. Place the tail end of the thread against the needle in the opposite direction of the sharp end. Wrap the thread around the needle a few times. Grip the wraps in between your fingers and pull the needle out away from you, still gripping the thread wraps. Continue pulling all the way to the end of the thread. This forms a quilter's knot on the end. The thread is ready to sew with. I'm just going to show you the stitch first without any wire and on double buckram so you can really see the stitch. First, we need to anchor the thread. Begin by bringing the needle and thread up from the back, leaving a short tail. Take the needle down, a stitch next to the thread coming out, forming a loop. Bring the needle up from the back, a stitch away and through the loop. Tighten up the thread. By leaving a short tail, the thread will have enough room to slide up and tighten rather than slip through the wide weave of the buckram. The stitch depth should be a generous eighth of an inch, but in this sample I'm just showing you the technique using bigger stitches. With your thread secured, stitch through where the thread is coming out again, forming a loop. Pass the needle through the loop and tighten the thread. This is just a stitch loop to start the actual stitching. About a quarter inch away and a generous eighth inch in, bring the needle to the front of the buckram, forming a loop. Pass the needle through the loop from behind and tighten up the thread. This forms a buttonhole or blanket stitch. Repeat these steps to continue stitching. You can see the thread riding on the edge of the buckram. You'll continue this stitch the length of the edge that needs wiring. Before beginning any project, I suggest you make a small sample like this just to get used to the technique. Now this is how the actual size of the stitch should look. This is really more of a buttonhole stitch as it is shorter and tighter than a blanket stitch. Typically the longer the wired edge, the wider the stitches can be apart, but usually no more than 3 eighths to 1 half of an inch. In this case, I'm working with a bite that's about an eighth of an inch in, and each stitch is around a generous eighth to almost a quarter away from each other. Remember, not every stitch needs to be perfect. It's okay if some stitches are not exactly uniform in length or spacing, but do try to keep them as consistent as you can. For the next sample, I've colored the wire so you can see it better. The wire is going to be stitched on the very edge of the buckram. Begin by anchoring your thread. Make a stitch in the next location, leaving a loop. Place the wire in the loop. Run the needle through the loop from behind, then tighten up the thread. Continue stitching as explained earlier, the length of the sample piece. 
be sure to keep the wire on the edge as you sew. Now I'm going to wire a closed shape. With a marker or pencil, make a mark on the edge of the buckram shape. Measure the wire against the shape that needs to be wired to get the length. It's always better to have a little more wire than you need. Use the mark you made as a starting and ending point to get the amount of wire that you need. When you wire a closed shape, never start at the very end of the wire. Always start at least two inches away from the end. We'll use the mark as a reference point. I have anchored my thread away from the reference mark. I place my wire end around the reference point and start sewing where the anchor is. Place the wire against the buckram edge and catch it in a loop as demonstrated. If possible and the shape permits, try to keep the wire ends joined together on the flattest side of the shape. This helps the joiner relax against the shape better. Continue your buttonhole stitch around the shape. If your piece is large or the wire is misbehaving, you can use binder clips to hold it against the buckram edge. I usually don't do this on small pieces. Stitch the wire on until you have about a quarter of the wire left. Place the wire directly on the edge over the other wire end. With your wire cutters, cut the two ends together, being sure not to cut the buckram. On one end, clip off about a sixteenth of an inch of wire. This ensures the two ends will not butt together in the joiner. Unravel the wrapping on both ends of the wire about 3 eighths of an inch. Snip off the unraveled wrapping. Insert one end of the wire into the joiner, then slip the other end in. Even out their placement in the joiner, you want the two ends to be as close to the center as possible. Once centered, use your locking pliers to crimp the joiner on the wire. Make sure the joiner's seam is between the pliers' jaws. You'll see the seam because it has a little gap in between. Use the table to apply as much pressure as possible to crimp the joiner. Crimp both ends and down the shaft of the joiner. As you crimp, make sure that you crimp tight enough just to keep the wire in place. It doesn't have to be smashed beyond belief, it just needs to give the wire ends resistance so they don't slide out from the joiner. Now continue stitching. When you get to the joiner, just stitch over it as normal. When you get to the end, anchor the thread with a few small knots through the stitching and clip the thread leaving a very short tail. Your piece is now wired, but we need to cover the wire. Cut a length of crinoline tape roughly the length of the wired edge. Pull the tape taut to exhaust the bias. 
To reduce bulk on the finished piece, away from the joiner, fold the crinoline tape over the wired edge. Using a simple running stitch, sew through the crinoline and the buckram layers, all around the wired edge. Begin by anchoring the thread with a few stitches. Keep the tape taut over the wired edge as you sew. As you stitch, make sure to catch all three layers, the top layer of crinoline, the buckram, and the bottom layer of crinoline. On some mass-produced hats, this step is completely omitted. There are going to be instances where you do not have to cover your wired edge with crinoline. Typically, they involve very thick fabrics. Once you get to the end, cut off any excess, leaving about one inch of tape to overlap on the other end. Continue sewing over the end. When you're done sewing, make a few knots to anchor the thread, then bury the thread through the two layers of crinoline. Clip off the excess thread. Your piece is now ready for fabric. If you have a shape with a point, gently straighten out the wire with your hands. You want it to follow the curve leading up to the point. Sew the wire as described before up to the point. Do a stitch exactly on the point where the wire meets the buckram. Holding the wired edge firmly, exactly at the tip, bend the loose end into the necessary shape. You might have to pull it in to the buckram to get the shape you need. Once you have the shape set, continue to sew as normal. For the crinoline tape, sew as normal until just before the point. Fold the tape over the point and form two little gussets on either side of the piece. Fold the gussets to one side and continue sewing around the piece through all layers, including the gussets. Whenever sewing wire with a sewing machine, you must wear eye protection. If the needle hits the wire by accident, it will not break, it will shatter. Remember, safety first. Sewing wire by machine is typically limited to larger pieces, flat pieces, and or shallow curve pieces. It can work with some pointed shapes, but it depends on the shape. For this example, I'm just using a flat circle. Measure the wire the same as you would for hand sewn wire. We will begin sewing away from the wire end. Set your machine to a medium width zigzag at about two to two and a half length and place the cording foot on the presser shank. Place the wire against the buckram under the foot with the wire riding in the middle of the cording foot channel. Hand turn the wheel to make sure the needle clears the wire as it is stitched. Once you are certain the needle is clear of the wire but still stitching over the wire, you can slowly run the machine. You need to be stitching over the wire and catching the buckram on the edge. It helps to backstitch at the very beginning. Continue stitching until there's about a quarter of the wire left. 
Remember, go slowly, take your time. As before, overlap the wire and snip the two ends, snipping an extra 1 16th inch from one end. Unravel the wrapping and join the ends like the hand sewn sample. Back at the machine, continue to sew around. When you get to the joiner, slow down and hand turn the wheel to sew over the joiner. When you get back to the beginning, sew over all of the previous stitches again. This just helps to really secure the stitches to the edge of the buckram. Your wire is now ready to be covered. As before, measure out the length of crinoline tape needed and compress the bias. With the cording foot still on, switch to a straight stitch to the inside of the wire on the buckram. Starting away from the joiner, fold the crinoline tape over the wire and sew, being sure to catch all layers with the stitch. Slow down when you get to the joiner. Layer the end over the starting point and continue to sew. Backstitch, then clip the thread. Your machine wired edge is now ready for fabric. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please ask in the comment section and look forward to more millinery and design videos soon.